Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to the conclusion of my course for graphing the absolute value inequalities. And basically what I do is just kind of like to summarize uh, the process for graphing absolute value inequalities, as well as kind of highlight some tips and tricks, and then go over some common mistakes. So remember the process for graphing absolute value inequalities is exactly the same as graphing absolute value equations. We first want to identify all of the transformations, identify what the new vertex is, if I'm going to be shifting left or right, up or down, and then, based on those transformations, um, identify you know, my new vertex. And if I don't have a reflection, or if I don't have any compression or stretching, then I simply just follow the pattern of my parent graph, go over one, up one, over two, up two from my vertex. However, if I do have, um, if it's a reflection over the x-axis, then I'll simply just go over one, down one, and over two, down two, because it's just reflecting over. Um, if I do have a number for my A or for my B that's either going to be compressing or stretching my graph, the best thing to do is just, just use a table of values. And what I would recommend is just using a table of values to the right of your vertex or to the left of your vertex. Plot two or three of those points and then reflect them over the axis of symmetry um, to find the, find the exact same values on the other side. Because remember that your graph is a V-shaped graph. So there's an axis of symmetry that goes through the vertex. So whatever your graph on one side, you can just flip it over to the other side. Um, some tips and tricks is I see a lot of students forgetting what the transformations were. You know, they, they understand them. They can identify, oh, A, H, K, you know, B, A, OK, I'm do this, do that. But then they forget them when they graph. So make sure that you write out your transformations. If you know you're going to be shifting left, say, shift left two units. If you know you're going to reflect over the x-axis, say, reflect over the x-axis. The next thing is using a table. Um, so many students can get confused. They forget their transformations. They forget what they're doing. And they're not really sure about you know, if they're doing it correctly. So always go back to a table. Choose, you know, write your equation, have x and y, term, y, x and y variables, and use x as your input. Choose, identify values you want to plug in for x, and then find y. I will say, make sure you understand where the vertex is. Because you're, if you choose only points to one side of the vertex, you've got to understand that you can reflect those over the axis symmetry to graph them the same. Because you don't want to have a solid line, which is a common mistake um, for students. They only pick points to the right, and then they just continue. They don't reflect them over the axis of symmetry. Um, as far as the inequality part goes, which is really, you know, you're graphing absolute value equations, and then you just kind of test the points. The tip and trick really for this is just remember, you know, you can use test points um, to determine if the equation is, or if the graph is going to be solid or dashed. But the best thing is just to look at the equation of your, of your, any, of your problem. If it's less than or greater than, it's dashed. If it's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, it's solid. All right? And that's very just helpful to know. Some common mistakes. Uh, the main important common mistake that I see is students shifting incorrectly. Um, if I have y equals a times x minus h plus k, my vertex is h comma k. So just notice that this graph is x opposite of h plus k. So if I have y equals x opposite of 1, then it's x opposite of 1 plus 2. So therefore, my vertex is 1 comma 2. If I have y equals um, x plus 2 minus 1, then it's x opposite of positive 2. So x opposite of negative 2 minus 1. So it's x opposite of 2. That means my vertex is now at negative 2 comma negative 1. Uh, when you have a value for b in there, you also got to understand the transformations are going to change. So instead of it just being h and k, it's now going to be h over b comma, oops, sorry, I didn't write that, h over b comma k. All right, that's going to be your new vertex. So that b affects my transformation, shifting it left or right. The other way you can look at it is just take whatever is inside of your absolute value inequality sign and then solve it for 0 for x. Whatever that value of x is, that's your new x coordinate of your vertex, which we identify as, you know, as h. Um, the last thing is use, choosing the wrong test value. A lot of students will choose either a value that's already on the graph. Well, if it's already on the graph, you should already know if it's dashed or solid. You can still test it, but that's not going to help you determine if you're shading above or below. Or sometimes they'll shade, you know, determine what the point is, and they'll say you know, true or false, but then they'll shade it when it's false and not shade it when it's true. We, 
we always want to shade where the rest of the points are because whenever a point is true, you know, above our graph, that means all the points are going to be true. So that's where we want to apply shading. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just kind of a uh, brief summary for graphing absolute value inequalities. I hope you enjoyed, took some things out of this course, and I look forward to helping you out on another one. Thanks.